tonight on Hard Copy. Secret Day Dancing Died. And accused teacher quoted, Don't let the dog see you kill him. The Secrets of the Solid Gold Dancers. We did some pretty sexy things for TV in those days, you know? <laughs> they shimmied, they shook, and they strutted. The Solid Gold Dancers made it the sexiest show on TV. Then, one day the music stopped. But when the dance ended, the real life show went on. Some of them really had a difficult time on Solid Gold. I mean, down to almost committing suicide. The tragedies and triumphs of America's sexiest dancers. And a little later, the Solid Gold dancers were the sexiest act on television. But since the curtain fell, not all their lives have glittered so brightly. And after this, the triumphs and tragedies of the Solid Gold dancers. After the curtain fell. They lit up the screen. The nation's eyes widened at the sheer sexiness of the show called Solid Gold. But when the lights dimmed and the dancing stopped, their real lives ranged from triumph to tragedy. They were the sexiest bunch on television, dancing, writhing, wriggling, and juggling to the top hit songs of each week. For a decade, they were America's swinging his sweethearts, American bandstand for grown-ups. Their sultry dance numbers sent the ratings to the top of the charts, and overnight, these unknown chorus line gypsies had become cult figures. All of a sudden, you know, you walk out in the street, are you a solid gold dancer? Did I see you on solid gold? Aren't you this, aren't you that? And you know, it's like, oh, you know, that kind of thing. So it was kind of hard to tell them, this is gonna happen all the time, and some just, now, you know, I talk to some of them now, and they look back and go, who do I think I was at that time? <laughs> you know? And they're like, oh, boy, I was really a snot. I was, yeah, you were. Backstage, the action was even wilder than what went on in front of the cameras. <laughs> That was one of my great uh, yeah. entrances. Yeah, that was great. She went, la, la. And my, that was minus a, my top. Yeah, her top went, boop. They were at the top of the world, and then, one day, the music stopped, and the dancers of the moment became footnotes in hoofing history. Solid Gold has made, it names for, has made a name for themselves as dancers, which I'm really proud of because I was a part of that, and it will go down in history. Today, Solid Gold is just a memory, but those sexy dancers remain with new dreams. But how do they fit back into anonymity? For some, it has been easier than others. But life goes on, even for the one who was closest to the stars. Before there was Paula Abdul, there was Darcel Lynn. She was the leader of the Solid Gold Pack. She choreographed many of the numbers. I was a working dancer. I wasn't like this was my first job. Some of the girls, this was their first professional job. And actually, I was trying to teach them to keep their heads on. Some of them really had a difficult time on Solid Gold. I mean, down to almost committing suicide. So we, we had some pretty tough times. To sit Pam Rossi was a solid gold veteran, having performed on the show for more than three seasons. It was a lot of hard work, you know, six years, it was grueling. Um, we all had our ups and downs, and, and, but a lot of it was just great, because the, the, the things that I, um, I learned, it was a really a training ground for me. They tried to break us. Gail Crowfoot hung up her dancing slippers early in her career when an accident kept her off the dance floor permanently. You never think ahead when you're having that much fun. You know, you just think this is going to go on forever. Um, but most, you know, I mean, you reach an age and you reach a point in your life, and if you, if you have been free of injuries, then you go on a little bit longer, and if not, then you find something else to do. One thing about Solid Gold, we were classy ladies. We, you know, the show had class, and we weren't what you, we weren't sleazy dancers, you know. But in the beginning, the sexy Solid Gold dancers had that reputation. This was years before Dirty Dancing and the Lombada. People across America had never seen anything like it. All the gyrating and rocking could be a shock, and they were still working out the kinkies. The dancers spent most of their time trying to keep their outfits on. We were doing a lot of falling out everywhere, because, you know, we, <laughs> those little outfits were, wasn't much. We had this one pose where our, our hand goes up, and when my hand went up, my breast fell out. <laughs> 
And then there was the time Playboy tried to get the dancers to take it all off. But the magazine and the dancers couldn't get in step. Some of the girls kept saying, well, I'll show this, but I won't show that. I'll do this, but I won't do that. And they kept to be like, what is this, you know? So we just decided, well, maybe we just better not do this, you know? As their fame increased, so did the pressure, and so did the egos. And it didn't take long for the team to splinter. Some of us got a little big-headed, and we needed to replace some. They want to dance the way they want to dance. Attitudes changed. You know, they were, they were young. You know, some of them were 19. Some of them was like their first professional job. And there was sadness, like the tragic news about a former host, Andy Gibb, who beat drug problems only to die of a heart attack. Andy Gibb was a, very, was a very, very special friend of mine, and he will always be on my wall of fame. Today, most of them are far from the spotlight. Pam Rossi is happy as a housewife and mother, spending time with her husband and young son, Christopher. She's more excited about her new life than her past career, but keeps her memories all around her. I have a balance now. You know, I have my family life, and then I have the showbiz life, which I also enjoy. I always be a part of my life. Gail spends her time selling cosmetics. But the performer in her is still itching to bust out. I think that that always, you know, will be in my blood. I mean, it's just, it's just in me, you know, to to want to do that. And every now and again, when I see the fly girls up there, I just get up and see if I can do some of it still. But <laughs> you know, some of the stuff they do is a little different than what we used to do. <laughs> And what about Darcel, the biggest star of all? Believe it or not, she lost her solid gold fever in one day, the day she found God. When I became a Christian, I just knew that my um, values had to change. There were some things about myself that I was doing that just had to change, and solid gold was one of them. Darcel married a man named Glenn Leonard, a singer who put in some time with The Temptations. Today, Glenn and Darcel have three kids and their own gospel ministry. Shining out across the sky. But Darcel hasn't given up the dance business. She's still choreographing, only this time her troupe is a lot younger. Five, six, seven. Her youngest daughter, Araya, is a student. The Solid Gold Gang stays in touch. They get together every once in a while to watch old tapes, have a few laughs, and remember. Remember when? I'm Alan Frio. Good night.